Welcome back to the Joe Rogan Experience, where we explore a wide range of topics with fascinating guests from all walks of life. Today, we have a very special guest joining us from the Mojave Wasteland. He is the leader of New Vegas and a powerful figure in the post-apocalyptic world. Please welcome Mr. House. Thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here. Mr. House, you have a very unique perspective on the world, given the fact that you've been around for over 200 years. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you've managed to survive all these years? Certainly, Joe. I was born in 2020, and I've always had a keen interest in science and technology. In the 21st century, I became one of the wealthiest people in the world through my innovations in computing and robotics. When the Great War broke out in 2077, I managed to survive by sealing myself in a high-tech underground bunker known as the Lucky 38. From there, I've been able to monitor the world and make strategic moves to protect and advance my interests. That's incredible. And now... You're the leader of New Vegas, a city that has managed to thrive in the midst of all this chaos. How have you been able to achieve that? Well, Joe, it's taken a lot of careful planning and hard work. I've invested heavily in technology and infrastructure, and I've established a strong system of law and order. It's amazing how you've been able to maintain power and stability in such a chaotic world. I'm sure our listeners have a lot of questions for you, Mr. House, so let's get started. One of the most fascinating things about your story, Mr. House, is how you managed to live for over 200 years. Can you tell us more about the technology that allowed you to survive? Of course, Joe. As I mentioned earlier, I was always interested in science and technology, and I had access to some of the most advanced equipment and knowledge of the time. When I realized that the Great War was imminent, I knew I had to take drastic measures to ensure my survival. So I poured all my resources into creating a self-sustaining underground facility known as the Lucky 38. That sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. Can you tell us more about the Lucky 38 and what it was capable of? The Lucky 38 was designed to be a self-sustaining bunker that could provide me with all the resources I needed to survive indefinitely. It had its own power supply and air purification system. That's amazing. And what about your physical body? Did you undergo any procedures or enhancements to prolong your lifespan? Yes, Joe. I realized early on that my physical body would not last forever, so I made the decision to transfer my consciousness into a machine. I developed a sophisticated technology that allowed me to upload my mind into a network of computers. That's incredible. It's amazing how technology has allowed you to overcome the limitations of the human body and live for centuries. I can only imagine the possibilities this kind of technology could have for humanity in the future. Indeed, Joe. The potential for technological advancements is limitless. And as long as I'm alive, I will continue to use my knowledge and resources to advance the cause of science and technology. Let's talk more about your work in New Vegas, Mr. House. The city has become a beacon of hope in the post-apocalyptic wasteland. Can you tell us more about what you did to save the city and establish stability? Certainly, Joe. When I regained consciousness long after the bombs fell, I saw an opportunity to rebuild and create a new society. I knew that the Hoover Dam was a crucial source of power and water, so I made it my mission to secure the dam and establish a city around it, but the NCR got to it first. And how did you manage to establish order and stability in the city? Well, Joe, I knew that a successful society needed a strong foundation of law and order. I created the Securitron robots, which were designed to enforce my laws and protect the citizens of New Vegas. I also established the four families who have helped maintain peace and stability in the city. It's amazing how you were able to establish such a functional society in the midst of all this chaos. What would you say has been your biggest challenge in running New Vegas? The biggest challenge, Joe, has been dealing with the various factions and groups that exist in the wasteland. I've had to navigate complex political relationships, especially with the NCR, and make tough decisions to maintain the stability of the city. But overall, I'm proud of what I've accomplished in New Vegas. It's truly impressive, Mr. House. You have managed to build a thriving society in a world that was once thought to be uninhabitable. I'm sure our listeners are inspired by your story and your vision for the future. Let's shift gears a bit and talk about the new California Republic, NCR. Mr. House, uh, they're a powerful faction that's been vying for control of the Mojave Wasteland. What are your thoughts on the NCR and their goals? Well, Joe, 
The NCR is certainly a formidable force in the wasteland. They've managed to establish a functioning government and maintain a level of stability in their territories. However, I disagree with their approach to governance and their reliance on outdated political systems. Can you elaborate on that? Of course. The NCR is a democratic republic, which means that they rely on the whims of the people to make decisions. This can lead to slow decision-making and a lack of long-term planning. I believe that a strong, visionary leader like myself is better equipped to make the tough decisions necessary for the survival and advancement of our society. That's a bold claim, Mr. House. Do you think that your approach is better suited to the challenges of the wasteland? Absolutely, Joe. The wasteland is a dangerous and unpredictable place, and it requires a leader who can make tough decisions quickly and efficiently. The NCR's democratic system is simply not equipped to handle the challenges we face. That's why I believe that New Vegas is the best hope for the future of humanity. I'm a busy man, so I'm afraid we may have to cut it short. That's okay. It's certainly a controversial viewpoint, Mr. House. I'm sure there are those who disagree with you. But there's no denying that your vision and your leadership have brought about significant changes to the Mojave Wasteland. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank you for having me, Joe. Let me tell you about our sponsor for today's show. Have you ever found yourself wandering the wasteland, parched and desperate for a drink? Well, worry no more because our sponsor has the solution. Introducing Sunset Sarsaparilla, the official beverage of the Mojave Wasteland. It's the perfect combination of sweetness and carbonation that will quench your thirst and give you the energy you need to keep trekking through this unforgiving landscape. Now, I know what you're thinking. Joe, is Sunset Sarsaparilla safe to drink? I don't want to end up with radiation poisoning. Well, let me tell you, Sunset Sarsaparilla has been thoroughly tested and is completely safe to consume. Definitely. In fact, it's so good, you'll forget you're even in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Another question is, Joe... Hasn't Sunset Sarsaparilla stopped production since the Great War? The answer is no. The NCR is actively building new manufacturing factories in the West, and those factories produce many products. One of those products is Sunset Sarsaparilla, which means it's in production again. So the next time you're out scavenging for supplies, be sure to grab a cold and refreshing bottle of Sunset Sarsaparilla. And don't forget to tune in to our show for more exciting adventures in the Mojave Wasteland. Republic.